All right, guys, I got some bad news. I know I wanted to uh, fly home this year at Christmas time, the $26,500 flight that it costs to go back to Nova Scotia, but I, I can't do it because I spent all my money on Force Friday. All the Star Wars stuff, I had every single thing, and, and, and I opened them all up, and uh, I have a big play set in my room. But that's that, that's a good investment, right? It's going to be worth something someday. Or maybe not. Welcome to the Triple Threat Podcast. Uh, this is uh, William Vaughn coming at you from Vancouver, BC, uh, home of um, the new Disney store at the Pacific Center where I bought all the stuff. Uh, snickering is Matt Vaughn. He's in Halifax. Matt, how you doing? I'm good. I'm a little worried that you can tell who I am by my snickering. Yeah, c- yeah, because you. I, I know, bro. Because you I snicker know. and I Mars. That's why. So oh, I, like, I do prefer I, Snickers I to Mars bars, so. and that, uh, that I do that, prefer that Snickers to Mars bars too. Actually. Below his standard joke came from Alex Vaughn. He's also in Halifax. <laughs> <laughs> what is below your standard, bro? Okay, that's, that's good. That's good. That's good. I know it's just a bit. It, the honesty is a bit much right now. The honesty is <laughs> a bit much. Well, it's it's hardly ever heard. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> people are so untrue. Sometimes when we touch. <laughs> Uh, no, I was, I was <laughs> quoting your boy BJ, Alex. You're a big BJ fan, right? See the guy? Yeah, he sings that one. Yeah, I'm a big, anyway. uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> big, sure. I like, you know, I like him. I didn't know that one, but that's fine. Uh, you'd know it to hear it. Yeah, I'm sure. So, Force Friday, what the F is that? I thought it was Forest uh, it was, Friday. He's talking about the Star Wars uh, unveiling yeah, of toys. Yeah, I was like Forest Friday. Interesting. It, it's the Star Wars unveiling of toys. Uh, on a YouTube, their YouTube channel, they have like an 18 hour like unboxing marathon or something like that. But Shut yeah, up. it's, it's star Wars. Uh, starts in Australia. I think it does start in Australia. Yeah. As, as always, they wake up early in the morning and like guard of the as store. Always. We mean as always. Well, everything starts in Australia first. Yeah. The day starts in Australia. The day starts in Australia yeah. first. As that's always. That's just a, yeah, that's kind of a matter of opinion though. Mm, no, if you, what's well, the first How place in the a, world to, to get just so we're 4th. clear. You said, you said that, everything starts in Australia. But then you were like, uh, yeah, every day starts there, which are two different things. Every day. Just to be close. Okay, okay, no, no, no. Every day. Don't start like this. Every New Year, every day where's the first so place wonderful. you see the uh, fireworks? It's always Australia. Take so Australia's going to get it first. Midnight, September 4th, hits Australia first. After as midnight. All right. And uh, Swig of Water for the Working Man. Anyway, yes, uh, the Forest Fridays is the big unveiling of all the Star Wars toys. I saw a cool uh, toy. Yeah, they're they're all. Um, I mean, they're all they're all they all look kind of cool. Um, uh, well, S M H the, 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 the Sphero uh, BB eight eight or eight. Where the, I don't even know what that droid's called yet. But have you seen uh, that? BB eight? Yeah, have no, no, that? looks yeah, look, it, it looks cool. um, like your standard Star Wars uh, fair. So there you go. Uh, if you want to buy toys for something you haven't seen yet, you don't know if you even like the, the well, character. I s- you I saw uh, somebody online it. who did like they're like look at my uh, look at my cosplay of the the bad guy from uh, Star Wars Episode Seven and I was like you don't even know if you'll like that movie though I know uh, like, that's it's, like, I think it's such a weird thing to do it is but the, you you we saw the same phenomenon kind of at the uh, Episode One premiere with a lot of people <laughs> with dressed oh, yeah. as Darth Vader or Darth Vader uh, some of those a little hard to see the movie through the mask obviously yeah, but some people well. dressed up as Darth Maul like this guy's gonna be awesome he gets cut in half in the first movie at the end of the first he was movie. cool though yeah i don't think he, he was, was cool he just didn't cool. he just didn't quite have no pun intended he didn't have the legs darth vader did oh, to make it through the entire <laughs> actually darth vader lost a leg too didn't he he, he lost uh, i think he yeah, lost both of them I he just know. ended up with one arm yeah crawl off that embankment well he's more machine now than man twisted and evil yeah uh, anyway, that's Forced Friday. But um, there was a decision that was forced uh, also this past week. Guys, uh, this is a topic we don't didn't discuss too much. Every time I breached the subject, it just got kind of waved off. But now we can discuss uh, uh, what, Alex? What can we discuss? A wrong that has been righted, at least for the time <laughs> being. Uh, that would be still, Tom Brady's yeah. suspension being... Uh, denied, for lack of a better term, by Judge Berman um, in the NFL's case to have him suspended for four games for um, the deflating situation. I won't call it what everyone else calls it. The the fact that I he like may Ball or Gossie, may not have, like have better knowledge than not had knowledge of, and it's more than likely that knowledge was pertained by him in regards to the following. 
um, him having played with uh, underinflated balls in the SC Championship game. Four game suspension is out the window. Expunged, I think, Expunged. is a word. Expunged. That would work well. Is a word or the word? A, a word that would work well. In a 40-page a, decision, and I skimmed the first page and a half. <laughs> I'd so for you for, the, 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 that's a lot. The, the technical mumbo-jumbo is, uh, is not uh, within me, nor would you want to hear me regurgitate such uh, mumbo-jumbo. Yeah. No, I think sure. one of the things they, that they talked about in the ruling was just that the NFL bungled the investigation, did not handle it the right way. That's not – I don't see that being possible, Matt. They usually do everything very well. I know, right? It's They're shocking. usually very good at everything they do. There's, yeah. It's such an embarrassment of an organization that it's makes – It's crazy. That's something that's so like, – Billions of dollars. <laughs> something that makes something so good. That, but like I was watching highlights today, and I, I was like, oh, man, football is great. And uh, it just – it is crazy how wrong they get it, how wrong they get everything. Yeah, I mean he doesn't have anything to do with like the quality of players. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just yeah, saying. Right. The sport itself yeah. is great and the league itself are a bunch of d yeah. I don't know if I like it. I don't know if I like any of the owners. Maybe Bob Kraft, but that's entirely by <laughs> I don't like any owner except for the guy who owns my favorite team. He's yeah. Great. Uh, yeah, of course. If I like the Ravens, I'd probably like whatever sack of nuts owns that place. Wow. Like, He's yeah. called him a, a – you compared the owner to a scrotum, sir? Uh, no, I think he, he – He said second. No, like a, like a garbage tools. bag full of peanuts. Yeah, like a garbage bag full. Hey, whatever. They have shells, so as long as they have the shells on. Yeah, you can, still, you can still pop them open. It might taste a little oh, rubbery. Is garbage or bag weird. dirty? I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's a clean garbage bag. You can fill up with <laughs> I mean, it's, regular it's, peanuts. Eating out no, of a garbage no, every, bag. Everybody knows once something hits garbage bag material, it, it, obvious, it, it turns into uh, – Refuse turns into rubbish and becomes diseased. Everybody knows that. I don't think that's a thing. I know. Uh, it is now, though, and now the fair listeners of the show have, have learned it. The question so is: I, so now that yes. Brady, I mean, the league's going to appeal it, obviously, because they'll never let this die. Um, now the question is whether or not the Patriots should go after all the punishments they received um, from the same investigation. Um, I would assume it's recommended that they do. I would assume they don't and just kind of let uh, the gods be bygones. But they won't be bygones because they're appealing the decision. Man, oh, man, that's stupid. Yeah, I don't know. It's annoying. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So this is this will never die, um, much like me. So knock on wood. Um, but yeah, it's good to see that, you know, what it could generally be conceived as like a poor investigation and arbitration and complete failure to... I mean, the judge did give them time to kind of like, okay, you guys, come to an agreement. And I think Brady's legal team was like, you guys d- did this so poorly that it's not even worth discussing whether or not you or I should, should well, I heard, take a lesson. Because the judge couldn't reduce the sentence. He could only appro- like uphold the suspension or get rid of it entirely. I heard that, they were, that Brady was open to a one-game suspension to get it all out of the way. Yeah. Whether or not that's true or not is kind of hard to say. Oh, very much the case. Yeah, so we'll see. But anyway, that's 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 done for, which is good for now. So he'll be playing in the season opener yeah. this Thursday against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah, the Steelers. Go to. I uh, I drafted him in fantasy way later on, and I'm very happy that I did. Took it yeah, you you must have had a good good fantasy draft. Mine were. Uh, oh yeah, I have one oh, okay. tomorrow and one that was this weekend that I actually had to auto draft. So that's fun. You little bummer. Um, yeah, so good for you that you had this come out right before, uh, had your draft right before the ruling, because that is that is just grade A prime beef right there. Oh, yeah, man. The primus. Wagyu. Did, the primus didn't you say, Alex, primus. though, that he doesn't put up really good fantasy numbers, though, for a quarterback? He doesn't. <laughs> relative. Yeah. like, But so relative to, to have, the right. if you get him late, then he's fine. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's he good, did it's good later late. last year, but... Going like there was probably three years ago, we put up huge numbers, and since then it's kind of been diminishing law of returns. And that's just you've seen it in the receiver game. A healthy Gronk with a healthy Gronk, though, he puts up really good numbers. So I shouldn't say he doesn't put up good numbers, but it's very relative to the guys on his team. Just like you see Eli Manning's numbers go up when, when, um, with how good a season Odell Beckham Jr. had last year. You got to work with the tools you're given. Sometimes you can pull a win out, but, you know, most guys don't really care about their fantasy numbers at the end of the day. Yeah, that's true. Unless they Except have themselves for Justin their own team. Tuck. Yeah, see? He has them on his own team. Uh, all right, there you go. So, Tom is uh I right been wronged. I was very excited to hear about it. Uh, it was hard to concentrate at work for several minutes, and then I got right back on the old, <laughs> uh, the old uh, horse there. 
The old horse. We'll Emails and the, the the stuff. The stuff. Yeah, we're just a couple days away, ain't we? From uh, we are just off. a couple days away. Yeah. Well, Thursday do you have any evening. expectations for the, for the season? I expect uh, games to be won and lost. Oh, boy. Do you have any expectations for your own team? I mean, I'm just trying to get anything useful out of you here, Will. Let's go. Wow. Come on. Come on. Wait, you're, you're going to say that. You're really awful this week. No, no. He said, uh, you're oh, really well, like, bad. Talk dude. about the Ravens or something, man. I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get you to talk about something. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I don't have super high expectations for Baltimore this season. Where's um, the, what on the uh, if there's a spectrum of your expectation? What's the best you expect out of that? Playoffs, playoffs. Okay. Yeah, I expect playoffs. Fair enough. Uh, and then uh, from there we'll see. But um, I don't know. I, I I have trouble keeping track of football in the off season just because the off season feels so long, and I just I just want the games to be played. I guess I feel the same way about uh, I guess most sports. I feel the same way about hockey too. Like we can talk about it all we want, guys, but until the puck drops. Until the ball is kicked off, then uh, you know what are we doing here? Let's just let's just be entertained by these uh, fantastic these uh, athletes, fantastic Mister Foxes, these fantastic beasts, and where to find them? Let's let's just wait nice. to be entertained by them. So there you go. Yes, Thursday, I would, I'd very much like the uh, Patriots to put a hurting on the uh, Steelers because yeah, a division rival, and I just plain uh, don't like them. I respect them, don't like three them. of us, I assume. Uh, yeah, 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 certainly. None, none of us like the Steelers. Well, that's good. Um, what's, what are your expectations for uh, New England now that they got uh, their boy under center again? A little less good than last year, maybe? Yeah, a little less good. So yeah. not a, not a, a Super Bowl, good. then. Well, they don't have the secondary that they had last year. Like, that all went yeah. away, and they don't have Will Fork. So the line's interesting. We'll see how Dominic easily kind of fills that spot, and that whole uh, front seven goes. And then the secondary is just a complete crapshoot. I think we're back to where we were two, three years ago, where it's just, you know, Ben, don't break defense, but Ben, don't break, don't win your championships. And uh, so we'll see what happens there. Yeah, obviously there's some, uh, some stars out there waiting to be born. I think even with the plays being made or not being made on Darrell Revis' half, having him on the field is a huge coup because you're always aware of him. He has too much pastiche for lack of a better term, that you're not going to ignore him. He's always going to be top of mind. And even when he's, you know, just playing regular old football, he's still going to force you to make some mistakes or, or cause you to second guess yourself. All right. No, good. Uh, yeah. Last year we, last year we had a really big uh, football preview. This year is uh, a little more um, retracted. L- Loki. Well, little, you know, little. time, time constraints and, uh, and whatnot. Um, we, we could have Alex, you shouldn't week even... after week one. Yeah, you, well, you shouldn't even be excited for football because you gotta, you gotta, you're gonna miss a lot of it in yes. um, in, in Euro trip. Yes, I will. Uh, did you uh, did you pick anything up for your trip? By the way, anything interesting you're gonna be doing over there? Um, I got yeah, I got a ticket to Hey Rosetta concert on October third in Cologne, Germany, uh, and I also got a ticket to see Liverpool play Norwich City. Um, which is uh, going to be a lot of fun. They don't really have good sites over there, like a stub hub or something like that. Um, they do have them, but they seem sketchy as ish. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I actually had to get this like uh, like crazy expensive hospitality ticket, and I didn't even know how to book it online, so I had to call. But they're super nice about it, so it's all set up and, and ready to go. So I'll be seeing them play Norwich City on September 20th, 2015. So, uh, yeah, that'll be cool. So you Go had to, to this, call like, England? Dinner beforehand. I had to call England. From from work, obviously. You use the work phone, right? Well, my cell phone's a work cell phone. It has a long distance plan, so I just called uh, 011441513639199. And then I was good to go. I really hope that's actually the number you remembered. I'm looking at it right now. <laughs> oh, darn it. I wanted you to memorize it. Oh, okay, I wanted you to dial 101925 first. Two. Call 10-10-220. Uh, yeah, and the old folks at Liverpool will help me out. They're nice about it. Well, that's good. So it's a hospitality ticket. So what? You, you have a dinner? You gonna, yeah, you like go a, to like a, a sweet or course something? dinner beforehand. You get a program. <laughs> Apparently there's a former player there. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> then, wow. Then you just, just a short jaunt over to, to Anfield, uh, kind of see the sights, see the game, and then I'll be off to, to London the next day. You sound like yeah, if I'm not in. Well, that's good. Uh, that's a good way to experience it, I suppose. If you're in town, you might as well go for the whole hospitality ticket. 
Well, I mean, when you look online at like the tickets that you're going to possibly, you know, buy secondhand, by the time you put in the taxes and fees and all that, it's up to close to the same amount, and you're not a hundred percent sure. You know, there's always a bit of sketchiness when you're buying tickets online from from a secondhand source. So, um, at least buying straight from Liverpool costs a little bit more, but it's worth it. Excellent. Yeah, you're gonna have a good time. Mm-hmm. I better. Yeah. Yeah. Wish I would see my favorite sports team live in the next few months. Oh, I think you may. Yeah, uh, they're in may. England too. They're in the newest of Englands. Yes, yeah, the newest England. Yeah. No, you think about New York, York is just is just the newest York? Well, it used to be New Amsterdam, didn't it? I don't know why they changed their name. I should really do that research. Um, but it's not it better that way, Will. I guess New Amsterdam is a bit um, is a bit uh, of a mouthful. It's a bit the wordy. reference. I don't know if you heard that. Did you get that reference, Will? What, what, sorry, but what was it again? It was the, the might be Giants reference. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, all right. That's fair. Yeah. That's yeah. Well, you didn't get the they might be Giants reference? I know. Where was I? Uh, right down your alley. Or up <laughs> I don't know. Uh, well, it wasn't in my alley because I didn't know it. But that's okay. Uh, that's okay. We do, we're, all, we're all trying real hard. That's yeah. Okay. So okay. it's good. Uh, thanks for listening, folks, to the podcast, by the way. I'll catch you next week. Yeah, <laughs> we'll catch you next week on the Triple Threat Podcast. It's now going to be what's this fifteen minute podcast every week. Yeah, so why not? Yeah, why not? Just all your information right away. It's a quarter of the length of the evening news, right? They they always prattle on too long. I don't news. Evening news a half hour. Well, it depends, I guess, on what where. Half hour Maybe local, half news. hour national. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. You need what else? It's the elections. Ah, uh, yeah. yes. Yeah, those are happening. They sure Don't ask are. me about any of it. I, I just oh, shoot. Realized. I got to look into voting for that. I don't have no information, I just, but oh. I just realized Tom Mulcair is a person. So I'm learning. I'm learning, guys. Right? Leave me alone. You didn't know Tom Mulcair was a person? No, I did. I did when you guys mentioned him weeks and weeks ago. But I didn't before I said I didn't know who the leader of the NDP party was. Oh wow! Did you know the that? the P in NDP is party? Uh, I did. Yes. Okay. <laughs> just so we're clear. Yeah. The NDP stands for new. Actually, used to be the New Amsterdam Party, right? And now they're the uh, New York Party. Wait, um, did I say NDP? Did I say NDP Party? And you were snarky about that? <laughs> no, I was Tony Snarky about it. Tony Snark. Uh, it's like when someone Tony says Snark AT- has lots of Tony Snark has lots of Tony Snark. The the ATM machine or your PIN number, right? Yeah, so those I forgive more. So I don't know. Why. Yeah, it's fine. It's just whatever. You can say whatever you want. Claire hey, um, so I funny. watched a couple of movies in the last week. Yeah, I didn't watch really. I didn't watch really anything new that came out because, like, what's out now? Uh, I mean, I'll. I'll, I, don't know, I'll check I saw it, a new movie. I can talk about. It. I'll talk about that after. Yeah, I'm busy, but um, there's one movie that came out. Didn't do so hot. It no. was the what the heck is this movie about? Movie starring Zac Efron. I, I mean, I, I knew it was about. I'm just gonna watch the trailer. It's about EDM, baby. Oh, it is. Okay, gonna be the next yeah. Skrillexes. Oh, it is. Skrillexes. They, okay. So, uh, Matt, you might have the numbers Skrilla, in front of you. I, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I, if I memorize it, I think I'm 1. pretty close. $1.8 million. $1.8 million opening weekend for We Are Your Friends, which is, the, I believe, the third worst opening weekend for a wide-release movie of all time. Worse than Pluto Which is about Nash. more than 2,500 theaters. I mean, it depends how many theaters there are when, you op- like when it opens. I think it's different. I think 2,500 about now makes sense. That's appropriate. Okay. Um, you know, 10 years ago, it would have been less... Ten years from now, it'll be less. I'm yeah, sure. it did very poorly, though. It did very, I, very, very badly, which is too bad. I feel like, uh, man, I don't know. Zac Efron, what's going to happen to him? He's going to have to go back and make High School Musical 5, the college. Years. Neighbors 2. Oh, yeah, no, I think I, I yeah, yeah, I think he's got stuff coming down the pipe that'll maybe, hopefully this won't be too much. Someone and Someone Need Wedding Dates is another one, I think. Oh, yeah, I've heard of that one. Whatever yeah, that so would he's be doing, I think he's Adam doing some Divine. I think he's doing some more Divine. comedies, so he'll he'll be all right. I, I suppose. Yeah, I ain't yeah. worried. I ain't worried about him. But yeah, this 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 we are your friends movie. I was like, what what is this about? Like they're working in an office, but they want to be DJs. Is that it? I don't think they work in an office. I think it's just workaholics. Oh, okay. Oh, well, whatever. I, I I couldn't figure out. I was like, okay. so what, what what did you see? You couldn't figure out where. <laughs> I, don't I was know just like, where are you now? Where is we are your friends? Didn't you watch Where Are You Now? Wait, what did you see? <laughs> you told I us did earlier. see Where Are You Now. Where Are You Now is a uh, it's oh gosh, I wanted to make Justin Bieber song. Everything. Is there actually a Justin Bieber song? Yeah. Is it like Where, where Are You now? now That I Need You? Where Are You Now? And then the nice. thing goes like 
Ooh, you know, whistling is not good stuff. great for podcasts. Oh, I don't care. Break them. So, break the break internet. Them. Will, what did break you see? Ears. You saw two movies. Break them. Yeah, I saw two movies in limited release. Uh, the legs. first break was a movie called uh, Turbo Kid. Uh, it's produced by Dartmouth's own uh, Jason Eisner, nice. the director of uh, Not to be confused Shotgun. with John Isner, the tennis player. John Isner, or Michael Eisner, the former Disney, was he CEO or something? Anyways, not to be yeah, confused with either of those people. He's his own man. So this is a co-production between Canada and New Zealand, and it was shot in, um, I think it was shot around Montreal. It has uh, French directors who directed it. Uh, it is a throwback to 80s um, action movies. It's super violent, definitely not for the kiddies. Definitely not for anybody under the age of uh, 30. So I was just of age to, to, to go Shoot. there. Can't wait to um, be old enough to watch that movie. But it was all right. The, vi- the I thought the violence was very inventive. Um, Michael Ironside is in it. You know him from well, a bunch of 80s movies too. He's also the voice of Sam Fisher in the Splinter Cell games. I guess he lives in Montreal because I know Ubisoft is uh, based out of there. And Ubisoft does the Splinter Cell games. So Michael Ironside's the bad guy. He does his best kind of Jack Nicholson impersonation the whole way through. And um, it was good. It was mildly entertaining. It was a little slow for a movie called with, with Turbo in the, t- in the title. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I just – I would have liked a, a little bit more out of it. I know they did it on a very limited budget, but I also would have liked to have seen what they could have done maybe with a bit more of a budget. Um, but it's um, – it's a good. I'd probably give it a six out of ten um, for some inventive uh, violence and some interesting kills. But it's pretty low rated for you, Will. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, because <laughs> my worst rating ever. Because my worst rating ever. Worst film of all time. Twenty out of ten. Uh, no, it's uh, yeah. I, I, I don't. I don't know if I can straight up recommend it. I, I don't think it lives up to the promise. Um, that's just me. Matt, what else did you see? I said I saw two, but I'm going to take a break and let you... Oh, fair enough. One. Sure. Uh, I saw uh, Z for Zachariah. Re- a movie very hard not to say Z for Zachariah as a Canadian. Yeah, it is, eh? Yeah. I so uh, say Z. What's that? I think I just say Z. Like, it's not like... And say I think, Z. your boy. Yeah, he's the problem. God. <laughs> he's the problem. Matt, I blame Matt's Jay. really good, uh, you know, Jay-Z impression. <laughs> your boy. Thank you. Do what I can. Uh, so I saw Jay-Z for Zachariah, which would be a good movie. Um, starring Margot Robbie, she would tell Uh It is... Sorry, a... Matt, you sneezed. What was that second guy's name? She would tell Okay, sorry. Yeah. Uh, it sounds like a, why did you tell somebody for, but <laughs> anyway. Uh, so it's uh, based on a book from a while ago. It is uh, science fiction, but not... Um, I don't want to say not high budget, but it's it's science fiction that there's not a, like a lot of spaceships and things like that. It's just set in the future, and I thought it was apocalyptic, post apocalyptic. It's true, and it was a very good movie. I I liked it a lot. It is very slow moving. Not, I get very slow movies off the chart. It's just if you're looking for a, it's not action packed, which is fine. It's not an action movie. It's sci fi. It's fine. Um, if you've seen the trailer, it probably gave away something that I think you'd be better off not knowing. So if you haven't seen a trailer and you are interested in this movie, just don't see a trailer for it and you just watch it. And there's some surprises in there that you'll hopefully will catch you off guard, which will be good. Um, but there is a dog in the movie that disappears partway through. And apparently it's just because the director got tired of working with the dog. So <laughs> the dog in the movie and then there's just stops being a dog in the movie. <laughs> but, uh, performances are really good. Um, Margot Robbie is supposed to play like a, somebody just older than a teenager. She has a very convincing job of that. And Chua Tell you for is um, some guy just wandering around. It's kind of tense. It's good. Very well done. Z for Zachariah, 6 out of 10. Just kidding. Ooh. Uh, probably an 8. Probably um, an 8. Good. Uh, is it – did you watch Book of Eli? It sounds, it sounds similar. The Nazi Book of Eli. Is, what's the difference between that and the road? Book of Eli, um, he's trying to like protect the Bible. Do we know it's the Bible? I don't think. Um, that's I don't question. think you do. So way to give that away. Oh wait, no, no, no. There's a different spoiler in that movie. Never mind. Can we spoil that movie? The Book of mm-hmm. Eli that came out like eight years ago, and by okay. eight I mean five, and by five he's I mean uh, four because he, he's blind in that movie, but you only find out at the end. Oh, I think I would have guessed that from like the posters and stuff too, though. Yeah, it's like sunglasses on, and then the, the stick gives it away. 
Uh, I guess maybe it's not the Bible. It says in no, which, it is the Bible. Okay, in which you find that out later. Fun. Okay, well then I spoiled it. Sorry, everyone. Sorry, yeah, book no of Eli spoilers, guys. I'll put I'll put some. Th- once I say threats, I meant warnings. In the some show. threats. <laughs> threats you can't warnings are spoiler warning but not all the time. From book of Eli at the beginning of this podcast or like Just, in the thing. It came out five years ago. Hashtag deal with it. Matt Damon's in Interstellar. Deal with it. <laughs> no, Matthew McConaughey is. I don't know. You waited too long. Walt dies. <laughs> Like, oh. like spoilers that have no context. Jon Snow dead. Oh, yeah, uh, characters' names are kind of <laughs> <context>. <laughs> like if you just John went like dies. this. He was dead the whole time. There you go. There you go. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, there you go. He was a traitor because they were mean to his parents. That's Goldeneye. Uh, oh yeah, is it? It is. Sean Bean, or as I like to call him, Scene Bean. Call call him that? Uh, I like to call him that. Will, uh, I saw Z for Zachariah. You saw Turbo Kid. You saw something else. Why don't you tell us what that one was? Uh, yeah, I finally laid eyes on uh, uh, the film I worked on uh, two days after Matt's wedding called Edward. You uh, say worked on it because you were like the, you were key grip? I, uh, I was best boy. Edward Your best boy. Nice. Grippers. I always said you were the best boy. Yeah, so did, the, so did our parents. Um, but uh, yeah, know. the uh, the yeah, movie. I, I finally got the that. eyes on the movie that's been out uh, touring festivals for the last couple of months or so. It's been getting well received. Um, yeah, it's won a bunch of uh, audience choice awards and that sort of thing. Um, I'm looking at the poster I have, but unfortunately, it doesn't have the little. Um, I need a poster that's got the little. Um, what do you the call laurels? That? Little ivy uh, yeah. floats around. Yeah, I, need, I, need exactly. I love those. All that, those things on it. I love looking at like independent movies. You look at the poster, and like it won the award at the Orlando Film Festival. There's a okay. lot of yeah, sure. There's a, there's a lot of film festivals, uh, which is uh, which is good for us, and it's also uh, easy to kind of pad the resume. But no, I finally saw uh, Edward, and um, I went with. Uh, a uh, friend of mine, Sarah Canning's friend of the show, did an interview with her last year. Talked a little bit about Edward, so if you want to hear about us talking about Edward before I even saw it, uh, go ahead and listen to that interview one more time. Now, this movie is uh, about Edward Snowden, right? This is about Edward Snowden. No, that, and that's probably why we spell it, uh, we spell it differently. It's spelled E-A-D-W-E-A-R-D. It's about Edward Mybridge, who uh, spells his name like that. We didn't spell it like that. We spelled it like that. He currently he spells it like that? Uh, he's currently dead. Um, okay. I like that. That's optimistic. He's currently, he's currently dead. We'll see what happens. I am not one to say what could happen in the future. I would not bet, contrary to this, but hey. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, he's literally dead. Uh, well, no, the movie takes place in like 1873, so unfortunately he what? hasn't quite uh, made it since then. Um, but uh, yeah, it's about Edward Mybridge, the godfather of cinema, as it says on the poster. Uh, and uh, yeah, I was... Um, I was very excited working on it. It's like the first independent movie I've worked on with it was it was it's a micro budget, but at least it was a bit of a budget. But like I said with Sarah, it was a movie where everybody uh it was a movie that's built on everybody's blood, sweat, and tears and not necessarily on a dollar. So everybody's hard work really contributed to something very special. Well, I thought that while we were working on it and to to see the fruits of our labor come to fruition. Is that what we should say when a fruit blooms, by the way, comes to fruition? Um, Maybe. So, so, man, It'd almost be too much, though. It'd always be too much. Your fruits came to fruition. Uh, no. It was good to see it. It was just like Sarah's third time seeing it, and uh, I saw it at the Rio Theater on Broadway. So it was our Broadway debut. Funny enough, uh, like at the theater, too, there are posters everywhere for Turbo Kid. And the, um, there's a movie that uh, the independent wrestlers here – uh, ECCW, they made a movie called Weirdo Hero, and it was debuting right after Edward. So I was like, oh, that was a weird one-two punch for the Rio Theater tonight. <laughs> you got uh, the uh, you know film festival um, period piece biopic, and then you got uh, Weirdo Hero right after that. But yeah, I uh, I have to say it's easily the best thing I've been a part of by a long oh, shot. I enjoyed it immensely. Uh, I think the uh, edit that they have right now which is obviously the final cut of it. The edit they have right now moves at a, a delightful pace. I don't think it's uh, at all plotting. It's uh, it's actually immensely entertaining. And uh, yeah, I obviously will gush over it uh, being part of it, but um, I was uh, very, very proud of how it turned out. So I know 
uh, that it's coming to the Vancouver Film Festival. Uh, whenever that is, uh, I'll keep you updated. Uh, probably by the end of the month or so. And I know in October it's playing at the Van City Theater here for a week. I think that's from the 12th to the something, 17th, 19th, something like that. So uh, it'll be uh, around Vancouver. And I know that it's doing a cross Canada thing as well. So hopefully to you folks in Halifax, or if you're in Toronto or Edmonton or Calgary, or even St. John's, Newfoundland, uh, or Swift Current, Alberta, Alberta. Nope. Saskatchewan. No, shut up. Uh, If you're in any of those cities, uh, hopefully – I correct myself right away. If you're in any of those cities, hopefully it's coming to you soon. And um, I'd be very – I recommend it very highly. So um, that's that's the movie. Matt, the the other movie you watched, you were in that too, right? Uh, Like Z for Zachariah? Was I in that movie? No, I was going to say the next one you're going to review. Because we're going back and forth. Oh, okay. Uh, I saw a few. I saw Skeleton Twins. Like Alex, Alex saw that one before as well. Uh, uh, okay, so, you guys. <laughs> so we can spoil it. Um, yeah, it's on Netflix. It was good. That's the uh, Kristen Wiig uh, hater. One? Yeah, vehicle. You, yeah, That's definitely. Good. It's, Dram- it was dramedy, a dramedy, I guess. Drama. Dramedy. It's, it's a good word. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's really. I just came up with it now. It's a it's a movie with really good comedic moments that still has the chops. When it comes to plot, to be considered a drama, yes. So I thought that was good. You so what happened? The story, dramatic. yeah, the story is important. Yeah, story is story is very important. Performances were very good. Uh, they were convincing, uh, and I don't know. I guess it's not always a slam dunk when comedic actors, or especially people who are no. on Saturday Night Live, go for you know try to make it in movies, try to make a good and interesting movie. I don't think they can all do it. You know, there's uh, you know sometimes you get your your Chris Kattans and your uh, Rob Schneider's and have they tried to make dramatic turns? Yeah, I no, don't no, know just movies, the... just movies. Period. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. But I really enjoyed Skeleton Twins. I thought um, I really liked Luke Wilson in it. I had to think about that for a second. Luke Wilson's yeah. great. Yeah, I enjoyed Luke. Wil- Luke Wilson is great because I'm watching. Him like, yeah, that's a that's a real person. Really good. I think the characters are. I don't know. They're just. They're I don't know how to describe the so plot. They're... Like two people who can't get out of their own way. I guess. <laughs> Uh, I think it's a very good way of putting it out. Yeah. Why? There's like really uh, two really siblings f- who, yeah, siblings who are kind of self-destructive in a way. Yeah, yeah, just can't get out of their own way to get their lives in order. So Bill yeah. Hader basically comes back to their hometown uh, where his sister lives with her husband, and then they all, you know, you know, there's all drama in there. Comedy of errors. Ty Burrell, a dramedy a of error. Like yeah, Ty Burrell's Ty Burrell. really good. Luke Wilson, like the whole cast is really good in it. Yeah, really. Good. Um, and that's pretty much it, actually. The four of them, and then you know, bit characters here and there. And I'm always gonna be. I'm always a sucker for movies set in uh, the Northeast. Uh, yeah, in the fall. I yeah. don't know something about that. Like that. Even even something like um, oh, what's that movie called? The claymation movie. Um, Coraline. No, 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 no. It was. Um, I think it was somebody's name or something like that. How the heck am Co- I forgetting? Coraline. <laughs> 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 so far, meeting your standards. Uh, yeah. Uh, Casey Just this Affleck girl. Was a there's voice like in it. buttons on her eyes. Coraline? Um, <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. A, a claymation me, movie with... Uh, give me like three... Paranorman. Also set... Oh, oh Paranorman. Right, right, also right, set right, 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 in the right, fall. Right. I was going to say James and the Giant Coraline. But... <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Skeleton Twins is one I want to check out. I heard a review of uh, from... A... Right, this is this is a little iffy. Well, I heard a review from a girl from work. She was like, "Yeah, I watched Skeleton Twins. Wasn't really that funny though." <laughs> like, okay, well, that's pretty I guess good. That's where the dramedy part comes Guys, in. I, I gotta mention something here. A ribald comedy. I'll allow, oh, it, I'll allow you to mention. I uh, uh, I looked up Paranormal and I was like, oh, I recognize that actor who is in the lead role. I was like, okay, Cody Smith McPhee. Let me look to see Jurassic who, World. I was like, who's in that? Uh, who's in that picture with him? And of course, it's Cody Smith McPhee and Ben Mendelsohn. Ah, you could be on an IMDb page. We're maybe bringing it all back to Ben Mendelsohn, guys. Maybe he's not in your picture, sir. Cody Smith. Wow, Ben Mendelsohn. Hey, also in the up. road. How exactly? Oh, and also uh, Nightcrawler and X Men. Uh, Apocopolips. A- oh, okay. A- Acropolis. Uh, yeah. Well, it's apocalypse. You know what I mean? Clop- 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 uh, Hoppinus of Metropolis. Yeah. Uh, whatever. Uh, okay, so Skeleton Twins. Yeah, I got to check that out. I'm, I'm horribly crazy. behind in all my Netflix viewing. Yeah, I was going to say that. Well, you're horribly behind in your Netflix I'm viewing. I'm awful. I, I, I scan through the thing. I'm like, there's so much stuff. 
There's so much. There's so much. Whoa. Okay. And um, that's it for Alex. So uh, we'll see you next week. Whoa. What Matt. happened? Alex I mean, just it... fell off his chair. No. 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 And died. Oh, he didn't die. Okay. Condensation off of uh, my beverage making my coaster all sticky. Are you drinking a beer right now? By the no. Way? All right. Good. I am. I'm wasted. I am um, ish wasted. Uh, was it, was it me calling what? it a beverage, making you assume it was a beer? Uh, no, I just well, it's like Monday it. morning. Come on, uh, it's true. Yeah, you know, well, it's you know the weekend somewhere. Matt and Matt, you keep watching movies though, man. Like, what what else did you see? You saw the movie about Fred Durst. Is that what it is? I it was about Fred Durst. Uh, yes. It's called uh, Limp Biscuit, um, The Reckoning. <laughs> okay, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah I, saw, I saw all good things. Um, which was uh, which is the name of a movie, by the way. It's not just the name of a bunch of good stuff. I saw well, it's all good, all sorts of good things. Uh, I mean, it's I, all good. I, I don't want to spend too much time on the movie. What I will say is, when I first heard about the movie that um, Ryan Gosling is being Robert Durst in a movie, I was like, "Oh, that's exceptionally poor casting." That seems yeah, like a very bad idea. And then I watched the movie, and I was like, "Nope, he nailed it." Oh, did he? The one oh, good. Thing, so like, like it's. It's funny because it, it like the movie is 100% about Robert Durst. So if you've seen the Jinx and you watch the movie, you're like, yeah, there's nothing like every character has, you know, they're all, they're all named differently. Yes. Um then most of those names are fine, but the guy who okay, the guy who plays Morris Black, um he in the movie, he's his name is M- Merlvin Bump. <laughs> Morris Black becomes Merlvin Bump and I was like, not Mel. That's an awesome name. Like it's just so bad. It's like how bad how much can we weird up it's this? It's your name? cousin Marvin. Um <laughs> Merlvin Bump. Well, I'm well or mad. Either one of you please help me right now with uh the Tim Burton's uh agent's name in uh even with Kevin Smith. Oh. Oh gosh. Snap. All right, I don't think either of us can. Oh, remember, he's got the Ooh. weirdest name, though. Yeah, he's like, I'll say it again. There's someone <laughs> in this world. Oh, with it's a name. Bumble. <laughs> ah, crap. Yeah. yeah anyway, that's right, that's yeah. where Merlvin or whatever. What's the name again, Matt? Merlvin Bump. Merlvin. Merlvin. There should never be three consonants together in a name. Merlvin. Like M E R L V. Yep. O N N N N N N N. Yeah. I know, like I know, it's a real name. But it's also a fictional character, like a, a refictionalizing of a name. I so know, you can but like name it's anything just you want. Easy. Yeah, you don't have to yeah. call him Merlvin. The other thing I'll say about the, the last thing I'll say about the movie is that it, like, there's definitely it posits things about Robert Durst that, uh, or about like his uh, alleged, I'll say, crimes that yeah, sure. that the, the Jinx does. Like, it's suggesting things that aren't really tr- necessarily true, I guess. Well, that's, I mean, the whole point, I mean, that's like JFK, right? It's something that's based in reality, the movie JFK yeah, with all of it. Something that's based in reality, and then they kind of can take their own steps with yeah, it. And that's I, partially where yeah. the jinx came from, is him contacting that director or vice versa. Yeah. Yes, that's true. That is true. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a movie that I, that I liked. I thought Kirsten Dunst was good in it, too, actually. I haven't seen her much since then, but she was good. Yeah, KD hasn't good. been up to, to much. Yep. And then I saw uh, Furious Seven, which was the greatest movie of all time. Because Rock <laughs> breaks out of a cast with his. With his oh, I love that moment! I forget <laughs> if I ever knew that happened. I was not aware of it. Did not remember. It. I'm a huge fan of that moment. There's a lot of stuff in that movie. You're just like they're going like if you showed someone like Fast and the Furious, like the first one from 2001, and you were like, "Here's the sequel," they would be like, "Wait, wait, no, that doesn't make sense. How did that? How did that go that way?" Yeah, there's there's so much like it was just like between street racing in L.A. and then fighting a helicopter on top of a parking garage. Like, like full a lot on that like, happened in between war slash heist slash spy movie kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's just it's just a massive franchise. Like just this is like we just want to put every form of action in this movie. So there's uh, you know she she fixes cars, but she can also fight uh, Ronda Rousey in a room full of. Uh, guards <laughs> like the one thing the, I, the whole thing is very uh yeah it's it, it is the almost the definition of excess i didn't like the the hacker girl in the movie uh, i forgot her name but i think her name's ramsey in the movie but i think it it's was, natalie emmanuel sure that's her name she She's was in game of thrones too it, it was weird she was a like an audience surrogate that wasn't necessary sometimes in movies they'll be like you know if you're in a the fictional you know the exciting world of harry potter Harry Potter is your audience surrogate because he doesn't understand what's going along either. So he asks questions. People tell him. Ellen but all Page the time she's in, like uh, Inception. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so the whole time she's like, so what's this? Who's this? It's like, no one, there's no, nothing confusing in this movie. <laughs> Who's that? It's The Rock. He has a mini gun. Let's move on. It's yeah, actually like a we're... full-size gun, but The Rock's holding it. <laughs> So it looks like a minigun. Well, I mean, uh, mini yeah, it's like we've been around for all the movies before this. So we don't need back. someone to be like, oh. Also, everything is ev- like everything is obvious. It's like, what's that guy doing? Well, he's driving a car really fast. Uh, fast than anyone. That- yeah, exactly. So he's probably a street racer. I, like, yeah. Again, what's Tyrese so, do? No, nobody knows. Nobody knows. <laughs> it's what's unclear good, what the value is. But I look good. Um, Brother. Yeah, uh, it's, it's like there's nothing subtle about it at all. Everything is just yeah. so blunt. And it just it just goes from one huge set piece to the next. Yeah, oh yeah. But I, but I love it as a um, as a. Uh, it's like you know you know it's like people say binge watching. This is like binge. It's like a binge movie. It's like so much in one movie. Yeah, it's just so over the top. I really like the end a lot, actually. Uh, can I, can yeah. I say something? Can I? It's not, I don't think it's necessarily a, a spoiler. Can I talk about it at all? You can talk about it. Yeah, I don't, so, you can remind the whole, the whole the whole movie. And Alex, is okay? Are you going to be upset if I... If you spoil about? Fast Set Furious... Seven. Furious 7, bro. Furious 7. Furious 7, Yeah, bro. I don't know what the movie's called, so yeah, it's fine. It's fine, but yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. So the whole time watching the movie, I I don't know if I just thought this, or somebody told me, I, or I heard this somewhere. The whole time, I'm like, oh, I wonder how they're going to kill off Paul Walker. Oh, boy. How is he going to die? And the whole time watching it, I'm like, oh, man, 20 minutes left. He's going to eat it right here. It's going to be it's gonna be painful, because he really he died in real life. And then we get I get to, like, 10 minutes in the, the movie, and I'm like, oh, this is the end of the movie, and he's not dead yet. And then at the end, he like drives off to heaven. More or less, yeah. More like or in less. Greece? Uh, kind of. It's like the very end of it is like he pulls up next to um, uh, Dominic Toretto, and they have like a this like I don't know adorable little buddy drive along thing. And then there's an overhead shot, and his car takes a turn off, you know, through the hills to the sun, and where things just look got nice. And uh, so he doesn't. He doesn't. And just die. because you know he died in real life, then you know the character's dead. I just figured that they're going to be they're going to use his death for. I have to go to now. Effect. My planet, yeah, the planet needs, the planet needs, needs me. me. Exactly. I thought they handled it well, considering Paul died after production. Yeah, it was I kind of like I will say, you know, he died during production. He wasn't even halfway done the movie yet. No, oh, yeah, it's true. I forgot that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The shot, also, there's which a lot I didn't, which I didn't notice by the way. I, I didn't did. notice any I shots. A lot. Were, weren't finished. Yeah, I didn't like, think it was that distracting. I thought it was. Wait, well, you also don't it, know what obvious. the original intention was, I guess. So there's certain parts that he would normally be in that they just don't have him in. No, well, that's not really true though. That's the weird part is that there's there's almost no part in that movie where Paul Walker isn't like where it's obvious that he's not there or he yeah. shouldn't be there. He's always there. It's just that in a lot of his action scenes, he didn't film them, so he's a combination of a body doubles and CGI. And CGI Paul Walker is obvious enough. Mm-hmm. And they like when they show his face, it's only for like like a second at a time, so you can't really tell like how weird it looks sometimes. Yeah. But, like, definitely, and I think I read something that was, like, um, girl play, uh, Jordana Brewster plays Mia. Like, she was, like, all of her scenes were after he died. So she was acting to no one. Yeah. The whole time. That's rough, right? I mean, there's yeah. no good way to really, you know, go around that, I guess. Yeah. No. Like he, it's just yeah, you're doing yeah. what you do with what you can. Yeah. And it would tricky. be weird if they just straight up killed him off in the movie. That would ring a little too close to home regardless of how it happened. So it's probably yeah. a good choice to not do it. Yeah, I thought it was... Thought you know what discussions nice had at one point? We're like, do we... Oh, yeah. What are we doing with this guy? Yeah. Yeah, yeah no. It was really... It was very nice at the end. It did a very good job. That's good. Oh, yeah. um, no. that's, would you recommend to see? Furious 7? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm really surprised yeah. you like it. That's I like... Fa- I, like I watched... I think I've seen... I've seen the first Fast and Furious. I've seen the fourth in theaters. I saw the fifth, the sixth, the seventh. So I've seen... Was that four out of seven? Four to seven, yeah. Four to seven, five to seven. I've seen and one, like, two, and five. Four's not really good, but five is great, six is great, seven is great. Like, they really just kind of nailed it. And three five. doesn't count. Sure. It's like Bow Wow and Luke, not Luke Evans. Oh, is that Tokyo Drift? I Jeff? always think is, oh, is I Luke have seen. I think I saw Too Fast, Too Furious. Maybe I have. Too Fast, Too Furious with Cole Hauser's the bad guy? Of course you have. Um, Doogie Hauser's the bad guy? Cole, Cole Hauser. Uh, they're, yeah, they're well, like they're they're ridiculous, but they're well made films. The action shot well, and it's, you know this one's really well made. Is like, that the Justin direction Lin? on it is really good. Yeah, it's good. Is that yeah. Justin Lin? Anybody know? Star Trek Three's Justin Lin. I do believe so. Yes. Yeah, uh, fistful of paintballs. Uh, Justin Lin. You he did that? Oh yeah. no, kidding! He I did the paintball uh, episodes of Community. That's the only Star Trek Beyond. Is. Whoa, are they making? A... What? Uh, is that movie been announced as Star Trek Beyond? Is that true? 
Yes, when he announces that. But there's one last thing I want to get to because we got to ride off in the sunset. Yeah, sure. Like and I will mention one thing after you mention it, Will. So. Uh, you'll probably forget. Um, I was um, – I actually had to cop to something. Remember uh, our kind of SNL wrap-up last month yes. ago? sure. <laughs> sure. I said, hey, who do you think is going to leave uh, you the show? You said Brooke. No, not Brooke. What's his name? No, well, I was just – I was just – yeah. Did yeah. they announce that? Uh, Brooke's Whelan? No. Beck Bennett? They haven't announced any casting or firing, so I don't know if anybody's They gone. have announced a, a new guy. Oh, who? Who's the new guy? This guy named John Rudnitsky, stand-up okay. comedian. Is going to be a not ready for primetime player. And there are no departures at all. Interesting. Yeah, he said Beck Bennett was going to be gone, I think. Well, I thought, and then Matt's, Matt's retort was, well, does someone have to go? I guess not. <laughs> so I'm copping to that right now. I was wrong. Nice. It I'm was worth all along. edit that at this moment. Go back and edit it. Yeah. They no, should cut Leslie Jones out of, like, any sketch with, like, any complicated dialogue <laughs> or timing <laughs> or anything like that. But yeah, she's keep her funny, in the but she's just, she's like, just, yeah. she'll, keep her in she'll tapes and literally blow sketches. Yeah. Like, yeah. out of the water. There's a couple that were, like, I wouldn't totally say literally weird. blow them, Alex, but yes, you're right. Yeah. Sorry. Did I say literally <laughs> blow them? Yo, you sure did. Hey, uh, what was the other thing you wanted to say, Alex, before I... Uh, Tim Burton's publicist's name was oh, Bumble oh. Ward. <laughs> I'll say that again. There's a person on this earth with the name Bumble Ward. And that again so. goes by, surprisingly, by three constants in a row name thing. Um, so if you're if you're Mr. or Mrs. Ward or Mr. or Mrs. anything, or Bumble Mr. Ward Mr. Has or Twitter, Mrs. Mrs. Don't, don't call them... Twitter. Don't call your kid Bumble. Just... Just, yeah. I, I don't think that's a good uh, name, but Just you know what? For Bumble Matthew Ward to realize that he has three constants in a row in his name, but it's fine. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, that rule's gonna fall apart pretty quickly if you like Apple. You have a problem with Apple, by the way. That's not a name. They have a company. <laughs> Just, Wait, no, hold I on. Mean, I mean, uh, I think there's a yeah, certain... yeah, yeah. Gwyneth Paltrow's yeah. son. So uh, Chris actually, Martin's son. Whatever. The name, they constantly the name of a character. Everyone knows it goes to the mom after that. Except in Kramer, the name of a Kramer. character in Turbo Kid also uh, is Apple. But uh, we had fun this week, uh, but I got to go. I didn't. <laughs> Literally we have to go right now. Matt, week. you got some, some biz natch to attend to as well, right? Or you did last week? Uh, and, uh, yeah, I'm currently coming back from Montreal as you hear this podcast. Assuming Ooh, let's do it first thing Monday. Fancy. Boy, your arm's tired from holding that steering wheel. Uh, I'm on Twitter at True. William C. Vaughn. Matt's on Twitter at MP Vaughn. And Alex on Twitter at? At Evon. It's E-V-U-G-H-N. I-C-S. Great. Thanks for being here this week, folks. We'll try to do better next week. Uh, same, t- same time next week, knuckleheads. Uh, who else going to your buff? Just about everybody else. Okay. Kind of one another. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I lost it. No errors this week. <laughs> the view. Go to the big finish. Oh, God. Okay. No, Thank we really got to go. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 B